It's here. And good morning to you. I wish you a very, very happy Easter Monday. I hope you enjoyed the weekend. And we're going to look at debt, interest rates, feds, what's actually moving markets today, what's going up, what's going down. Probably a slightly quieter Monday today because the Europeans are still on the holiday. Lazy bastards. And if you are dreading the end of this long weekend, then I've got just the thing for you. And that is make money from your money so you don't have to work as much. That's really what it's all about. If you want to come and learn how Winston and I made 126% RACE in 2022 and 105% in 2023, and this year, I'm going to take some profits today, which will drive up our P&L quite nicely. But, you know, we made almost 5K here on a $30,000 portfolio so far winning 74% of our trades so far this year. And that's exactly what we did the last two years. Uh, we started tracking this properly. So come and learn with me our three-step system. It's really simple. It works for beginners. You don't need any knowledge or any experience. I assume nothing. Come and join me at felixrenz.org slash webinar. Is it here? Yeah, there it is. Links down below, also down below in the description, and grab yourself a free seat. It will be take about 90 minutes and we'll have some real fun and I'll walk you through exactly how I trade every single week and have done for many, many years. But let's get into debt. And this is not a doom and gloom video. I always want to make that clear. We might have an exciting headline, but it's important that we don't get caught up by that. We want to actually look at how do we make money out of this, right? What's the most likely outcome? What's the highest potential profit, lowest risk path to take here. And what you can see is that U.S. Treasury interest payments are, have hit a staggering $1.1 trillion, which is baffling, right? Defense budget is 800-something billion. And we've had similar kind of catastrophes before 2008, and then it declined. How, why did interest rates interest payments decline? Well, I just gave it away. The Fed stepped in and cut interest rates. 2022, same story, right? Fed cuts interest rates to zero, and suddenly government debt becomes affordable. And the question, therefore, is how soon is the Fed going to do this? Because if the Fed doesn't, it'll basically bankrupt the U.S. Well, I blame politicians. Actually, I blame voters. I blame voters. Don't elect people who promise you stuff. Elect people who promise you nothing. That's who you need to elect if you want to fix this problem. But I know that's a hard thing to do. I've also, all the charts for today's video are here for free. You can download them. Felixfriends.org slash debt. It's completely free. Just type that in or it should be down below or even scan the QR code if you're that kind of a person. You, you know gets a phone out and starts scanning things. Felix friends at slash debt, and you get the full, full debt research here. Now, is it going to get better or is it going to get worse? Well, right now we are, well, you are, I'm not, uh, not a U.S. tax, actually, I'm a U.S. taxpayer. I, I do. I pay both commercial and personal tax in the U.S. on certain income. It's going to double every eight years right now. So we're going to be at 40 trillion debt in 2025, and then 80 trillion, probably early 2030, 30, 31 at the current rate. So that's kind of mad, isn't it? So you getting one trillion of debt every hundred days, which is just staggering. I mean, like I plan my plan my whole life in six week slots, which is 42 days. To think that you can spend a trillion dollars in a hundred days is just absolutely bafflingly insane. Um, and how do you finance this? Well, they finance the debt through debt. The interest payments are paid for by more debt, which is why this insane amount of, of T-bills has been issued. Short-term T-bills. And that means the government's hoping for lower interest rates. Or maybe they have an inside track into the Fed. And they're not actually issuing all that many bonds and all that many notes, which are more longer term. Why? Because, again, they're hoping for low, lower interest rates, which is kind of smart if you think rates are going to come down, which I think they will. So that's going to change quite a lot in the market here. So the this is from Bank of America, the scenarios. If we have no rate cuts, 
interest rate payments are going to go to 1.6 trillion. 1.6 trillion, double the defense budget, just on debt, on interest. If we get 150 basis point cuts by the Fed, which is, what's that? Six rate cuts, then that will only be 1.1 trillion. So the US government saves $500 billion if we get six rate cuts. So do you think there is some pressure on the Fed to cut rates from up above the people who appoint them? Heck yeah. And I know they're independent and all of that, but you know, that kind of, I, I don't really believe it. Um, US def de budgets, if you wanted to see what that looks like, Social Security was the biggest item. Soon it'll be debt. Health, 880 billion. Medicare, 850 billion. Defense, 820 billion. And, 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 and you know, inc net interest will shortly be $1.1 trillion, which is staggering. Really, really staggering. It's two and a half times all corporate taxes paid in the US. But I think, from our point of view, it's going to mean lower interest rates. What happens when interest rates go down? Stocks go up, right? So, you know, cheers, right? Not really a big problem, right? I mean, you know, what is a serious problem is the, the, the scarcity of likes on this particular video. You know, nobody, nobody's pressed the button. Nobody's found it yet. Uh, so what is a little bit more concerning is the impact of or, or how big the largest seven stocks are as part of the S&P 500. And right now, they are 30% of the market cap of the S&P. Seven stocks are 30% of the market cap. And that's higher than the 2021 everything to the moon, diamond hand, hodler, bollocks rally. So that's kind of concerning. But I'll show you a chart on that at the end, which I think might make you understand this a little bit better. Now, of course, most of the growth in the top, the, most of the max seven are basically tech stocks, right? E-commerce stocks which funnily enough, have almost no US regulation. And it just means that it shows that the less regulation you have, the less the government freaking interferes, the more innovation you get, the more value you get, the more growth you get. Whereas every other industry is, 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 is kind of regulated to, to the nth degree. Now, Fed Chair Powell came in on Friday, Easter Friday. I don't know why they released important economic data on Easter Friday when the markets closed, but there you are. Uh, they are, um, they have no pity. But he said the fact that the US economy is growing at such a solid pace, the fact that the labor market is still very, very strong, gives us the chance just to be a little bit more confident about inflation coming down before we take the important step of cutting rates. I don't really understand the sentence, to be honest with you. He's saying strong economy, tight labor market means we're more confident that inflation is coming down. So the only way to interpret that, I think, is he's saying we're crushing the economy. And he's basically saying that GDP growth will come down, that unemployment will go up, and therefore that the fact that inflation has come down despite strong economic growth and despite low, un despite low unemployment is, is kind of a miracle. And he thinks, well, the lag in effect of higher rates are going to kick in and, and inflation is really truly beaten. I think that's essentially what he's saying. And then he says the fresh inflation data released earlier, which was higher than expected, he says is pretty much in line with our expectations. So the two dudes really chilled. I mean, unless he, you know, snacked on some of those Californian Easter eggs, which I understand are not entirely made of chocolate, but something that's probably cheaper than chocolate right now. I'm going to show you that as well. Chocolate, the squeeze of all squeezes, seriously. But first of all, gold. For all you gold nuts out there, the previous resistance to gold was here. Why? Because we had this high, that high, this high, this high, and this high, sort of a triple five high and what have we done? We have gone through the moon and then some today up some more gapping up again. So gold is truly, truly, truly on a, on a tear. And is that going to continue? Well, it looks like it's got some legs. Yeah. But I think also think that you're late to the party. 
if you if you are, I, I would say the the time to buy this. Where did my pen go? I think the time to buy this was when we exceeded. Can we have a green pen? When we exceeded these highs here, I think that was the buy signal. So if you missed it, you're showing up at four in the morning with a bottle of vodka and going, shall we party? And everyone else is just, you know, falling asleep. So I'd just be a little cautious with that. But yeah, the, it looks that technically it looks very, very good. Now, what looks better than anything is this. Does anybody know what ticker CJ is? Any takers? Thanks for the extra 70 likes there. I appreciate that. Anybody know what CJ is? It is what you've been nibbling on all weekend. It is, of course, cocoa. Cocoa. And cocoa is an interesting industry. How does it work? There are no major large growers of the stuff. It's lots of small little family-owned bits, mostly in West Africa, like Ghana, Ivory Coast. And the government sets a price at which the government essentially, or this stuff sold from the farmers, the little farmer with a couple of trees. So the farmer has not benefited from this insane rally, which is a bigger rally than NVIDIA. I mean, it's gone from like $2,000 all the way up to $9,766 right now. And that means they have no real incentive to plant a lot because they haven't participated in the rally because the whole fair trade thing is a load of labeling bollocks. And They've had pests, diseases, flooding, everything. And the encouragement isn't really there to plant trees because they're not getting the money. So unless you take out the, the middleman, the, the communism that's fixing the prices to the growers, this thing is going to keep going. Now, the second thing is that the people who buy the cocoa, they hedge. So they actually short cocoa to offset the physical inventory against the market. Now, as the cocoa prices skyrocketed, they've had to close out of those hedges because the hedges only work if the price goes sideways. It doesn't have work on a thing like this. And how do they close out of their hedges? Well, they have to buy more cocoa futures. So the thing is just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. And then, of course, all you lot eating all those chocolate eggs. I know I'm talking to you. Uh, that hasn't helped, has it? You've just massively spiked demand. So it's an interesting one, cocoa. Uh, one of the uh, unsung short squeeze heroes of 2024. Right, let's move a little bit more into the real world. Would you short Cocoa, Mustafa? No, no, because that's what everybody's done. That's why it's a short squeeze. So definitely I would not short Cocoa because uh, the, the, the growers haven't planted anymore. They haven't fixed any of the problems. Demand is, is massively outstripping supply. So no, I would not be tempted to go against all market sentiment on some sort of whim. Do you know this company, Vonado Realty Trust? Who are they? They are an NYC REIT and they're trading below. This was the COVID collapse because everybody left. They, they own commercial real estate. Sorry, I should have mentioned that, right? C-R-E, commercial real estate. This is the COVID collapse and we're trading well below the COVID collapse. Has nobody returned to the office? Apparently not. No, they really haven't. And this is the office vacancy in New York. Not sure if that's NYC or if that's in New York State. It doesn't really matter. We are... This year was 2008 when every banker worth his salt got fired and therefore there was massive vacancy. We are way above that. We're way above those 2008 levels and they've only been climbing up. And this is a real thing. This is a real problem. It's going to hit banks because all this regional and small idiotic banks with the daft management uh, own all the, the mortgages and the mortgages are defaulting. And that means, once again, what does the Fed do to fix this? Cut rates. It's the only thing to fix this. Cutting rates will reduce the expenditure on the mortgages on these commercial real estate loans. And it will get the small banks out from, you know, they basically have a sandbag on their head and a big fat developer sitting on top of it and they're drowning in their own stupidity and fairness. But yeah, so rate cuts, 
have to happen. Otherwise, the government's screwed, commercial real estate screwed, banking is screwed, and I don't think that's the way Wall Street bribes its way to money, right? So I, I doubt that's going to happen. Now, I wanted to show you this. I know a lot of people are index buyers. You put all your money into an ETF and you think, brilliant. And it is a lot better than not putting it there. Putting it in a sock is the worst thing to do, right? Really the worst thing to do. Well, setting it on fire would be slightly worse. But the forward, the expectations. Can I spell expectations? Expectations <laughs> on profits for analysts are what? What have we got here? You've got two lines. You've got a blue line, which is mega cap tech. So this is your, this is your Nvidia. This is your Microsoft. This is your Apple. This is your Amazon. You know that that kind of stuff, and. We're expecting all of the growth in profits to basically go to mega caps. The growth in, let me get a grayish pen here, in the other 493 stocks is this little line down here. That one. So you have to ask yourself, why do you want to own 493 duds that don't do anything? It's maybe not all 493 of them. It's probably about 470 of them. There'll be about 20 in there that are doing something half decent. This is why I'm not a fan of index investing. I just think it's it guarantees you average results, guarantees you an average life, an average retirement, average car, average house, average everything. Who the heck wants average, right? Now, I guess it's better than lowest 10% of the country. Yeah, okay, I get that. They don't invest anything, right? They're just, you know, put the money under the mattress, hoping no one's going to nick it. But I don't really get it. And I'm not saying to you, put all your money into the top seven stocks or whatever. But I'm saying to you, learning to become a stock picker is the most underrated skill imaginable because the gap, the difference between returns is phenomenal, especially when you compound it. So uh, there we are. Um, I don't see your name, but a lady with long hair says, I just registered for more tomorrow's webinar. Uh, appreciate that. You got no screen name. I didn't know that was a thing. That was not possible. Uh, that's very nice of you. I, I'll see you there tomorrow. We'll have some fun. So do, do exactly what Miss No Name said here. And that is sign up for tomorrow's live trading training, felixfriends.org slash webinar. And you'll learn how I trade, three rules, how any beginner can do the same thing. And by the end of the 90 minutes, you'll know whether you might want to trade or maybe this is really just not for you. And at least you've eliminated the option, right? And then you can learn how to become a better investor on long-term stocks. I've got tons of videos out on that as well. In fact, I'm putting a video out on that, I think, tomorrow or the day after. I'm just working on it. So that's where we are right now. Now, shall we have a look at the market or shall we... Shall we uh, just stick our head in the sand. Let's have a look at pre-market. Pre-market fun here. This is not the pre-market. Where is the pre-market? Here's the pre-market. Huge moves. Amazon, Microsoft at half a point. Everything else is flat, pretty much. NVIDIA, Apple flat. AMD down half a point. Nothing significant here. Nothing scary, nothing huge, but everyone's still high on Easter eggs, I, I imagine. So I might have something to do with it. This is Cocoa Futures, by the way. <laughs> Pretty nice, right? Uh, that would have been a nice entry here. I wish I would have done that. I did not. Um, I think Orange Juice is actually quite similar, but yeah, there are some interesting things here. I put all the charts for this today into this document here. Get your hands on it, felixfriends.org slash debt. If you want to see really what the data is from Bank of America on debt, I think it's quite... It's quite nice to have a look at it when you're feeling a little bit more calm and quiet and collected. Uh, Felix Friends at slash debt. It's completely free, of course. Uh, this is the webinar page where you sign up. Felix Friends at slash webinar. Just pop your name and email in there, sign up. And we're getting out today manufacturing data at 10 a.m. Eastern. I don't think that's hugely important. I think more important tomorrow is Jolt's job openings. I'm looking forward to that. And then on Friday... Uh, actually, Papa Powell speaks again on Wednesday. Oh, isn't that nice of him? And then on Friday, we get non-farm payrolls. That's the big one. NFP, as the market calls it, an unemployment rate. 
kind of similar. So we get we have got some big big data out there, uh, and, and 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 basically anybody in the Fed is uh, somehow getting paid to speak somewhere. Or I don't know, maybe they're hungry and they're going for the free finger food or something. I'm not sure, but they're out in full force again, undoubtedly trying to talk rate cuts down. So that could be a could be a bit of a theme uh, for the week. Are you tuned into the conversation with with Arnie and Jackson um, on Saturday? Uh, yeah, which was fun, which was an interesting. I, I, I like doing those kind of chats where we just chat and you sometimes get a little bit of a chance to dive a little deeper than on a video that's a bit short. Uh, plant a cocoa tree, absolutely. Could be could make you billions. <laughs> Put out a video on that. Uh, John Boyle says, link not working for me. Which link? The webinar link, really? Uh, Felixfriends.org slash webinar. Let me try try a different browser. That can be a thing sometimes. Uh, Thomas says, good morning. Good morning to you as well. Feel free to ask questions, chaps. Uh, super happy to look at absolutely everything and anything here. Let's have a look at the headlines. Gold jumps to record as favorite Fed inflation gorge stokes rally. Yeah, massive run up. We just looked at that. Iron ore swings near 100. China recovery. Tesla has Wall Street worried about how many cars it just sold. Be interesting to see what that number is. Uh, Turkey news. Bridgewater. That Baltimore thing. You know, they're saying it's going to take a year to like, I don't know, start rebuilding the bridge or something. That's what's wrong with Western countries. They just, I've got so much freaking red tape. If you, I mean, purely engineering wise, you could build that thing easily in three months, right? If someone put a head, a gun to your head, you do that in probably six weeks. But if you don't put the gun to someone's head, it's going to take them years to freaking do it and debate the impact on some fish that occasionally swims past and all that kind of nonsense. So yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. I, I I hope they figure something out there. It's just one of these things. Governments frustrate me. Mike says, my dog ate my coffee table. It's your fault, Mike. You should have taken him out more, played with him more, found him some friends, took him hiking or swimming or something. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm with your dog on this one. Remove last S and link works. Are you saying there is a typo in in the description? That is, of course, entirely possible. And the question is, how do we fix that? Here we go. Oh, debts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, um, I can see that. At the end of debts, there was an S. Okay, I believe I've just changed that. I've just fixed it for you. Thanks very much. Appreciate that. Um, California Royal Builders got built in the weekend. I mean, get the... um. Navy's engineering corp out there, or you know whatever they're called, they'll they'll probably do it in a weekend, <laughs> right? How did people cross bridges during wartime? They went, oh, let's do a do a plan on this. Let's see how these fields. Let's uh, study the local you know vegetation for a year or so, and then we'll no. They just built a freaking bridge. So yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, should have taken out the coffee table. <laughs> um, will small caps continue to lag, or will rate cuts be a catalyst? Okay, IWM, small caps, Russell. Let's make this a proper chart. And what do you see? What do you see? Well, we've broken through this kind of triple top here. Let me get a pen. See that triple top we've had? We went above that. We went above another high, got another high, and today we've broken out again. So technically, this looks very bullish. This looks like a really, really, really nice bull run up and um, lower interest rates should benefit small caps much, much more because they actually have to go to the bank. They actually pay real interest rates, unlike Microsoft or somebody who pay virtually nothing for their debt because they got, and they got lots of money that benefit from it. So yeah, technically, I think it looks very positive, but you have to also look at the chart a little bit further back there is a whopping amount of resistance up here, sort of above 215, something like that, that whole zone up here. And secondly, a lot of the Russell 2000 is, is complete. I mean, I was going to say dog shit, but I would have been rude, right? Uh, so 
a lot of stuff in there that is just junk. So I'm not a huge fan of the Russell. I do trade it. And if I had to trade it right here, right now, as uh, certain musicians once said, I would probably wait for the day to close above that high here the 8th of March high, and if it closed above it, I'd probably go bullish, but that's not, a, not financial advice, just, just what the way I would look at it if I had to do it. How's Winston today? Winston's glorious. Winston went on a hike today with some friends, a friend of his who's called Tofu. He is a Labrador, and he is, guess what, Tofu colored, and uh, he looks quite happy. He, uh, we recorded a couple of videos today, Winston obviously being the lead on those, so you will see him a little bit more in the coming videos. Santa's built a bridge in seven days. I don't know anything about that, I'm afraid. Hmm. People still have checkbooks. Do you think the rate cuts are already priced in? Yes. One rate, I mean, two rate cuts are priced in for the year. Um, absolutely. And, and, and if we get more, it's good. If we get less, it's not so good. So yes, the market always prices in what's happening right now. Microsoft in the green, Google in the red, Meta flat, basically. Apple, Nvidia going sideways, Amazon slightly up, Tesla pretty much flat. And yeah, we're expecting a bit of a quiet morning or day today, although that could mean more volatility, less people in the market because of Easter. Matt, I think, I think you kind of put it quite nicely there. Yeah, rate cuts, second half of the year. They could come with a slowing real-world economy. So stocks that, so consumer discretionary, you know, manufacturing, that kind of thing, car companies, that kind of stuff, they could be under pressure. And tech and, and, and mega caps will basically continue to benefit from the falling interest rates. I, I think it's a real possibility. Uh, look, Bob uh, says, love the German-British humor. You just offended every British person under the sun. He said, there is no such thing as German-British humor. <laughs> uh, so far, PayPal. Okay, let's look at a couple of charts here just before the market opens in just a minute here. So far, basically flat. PayPal, flat. Palantir, down 0.4%. Does that mean a lot? Mm, it could potentially. You don't want to break below $23, really, psychologically. We're trading at $22.92 today. So it'd be good if we could close above $23. Otherwise, you get into sort of never, never land. A little bit of support at $22.30. And then after that, uh, put on a parachute. Ding, ding, ding. Should we sell everything this week, says Julia? Rarely a good idea, Julia, but obviously it depends on what you hold. Uh, appreciate the ding, ding, ding from Julia. We always miss that. Uh, so there we are. Market looking pretty flat this morning. Uh, if you've just joined us, watch the video from the beginning. Make sure you sign up for the live trading training on Tuesday, which is tomorrow evening, Felix Franzalog slash webinar. Also get your pause on my charts for today, Felix Franzalog slash debt. Link is also down below. I thank you for tuning in and I wish you a glorious Easter Monday. Eat all those chocolates or maybe put them in the safe given the cocoa price of late and I look forward to seeing you on